Welcome to the NATO Public Forum YouTube studio. I'm Jack Kelly from TLDR News, and I'm joined by the former president of Croatia. Welcome, Madam President. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. I wanted to first touch on one of the biggest issues at the moment, obviously the war in Ukraine. And I was curious whether you think that NATO has done enough to support Ukraine and what you expect to come from the summit in that regard going forward. Uh, well, I have to say that the speed and the depth of our reaction uh, as NATO and as the European Union uh, was beyond expectations. When this uh, open uh, uh, phase of uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine started in February of last year. However, I do believe that we do have to step up our support in every way, not just humanitarian and political, but military as well, mm -hmm. in order to continue to support Ukraine in their right to self-defense. Uh, in the protection of uh, the postulates of international law, state sovereignty, territorial integrity, and the right of every nation to choose uh, their own future, uh, and uh, in defending the values, um, the values uh, that uh, we share together in NATO and in the European Union, in the whole of the transatlantic community. We yet have to see what the final language, uh, the final outcome of the summit will be. Mm -hmm. That support to Ukraine uh, will continue. Perhaps it will not be up to the expectations of Ukrainians themselves. So we have to continue, especially the military support. Uh, the um, uh, war has turned into uh, a war of attrition, mm -hmm. not just of resources, uh, but most importantly of human lives, but also a war of attrition on the patience and support of the international community who support Ukraine uh, to be able to prevail in this war and to break the cycle of Russian aggression. And looking forward, do you think there's chance for peace in Ukraine in the near future? And if not, what's blocking that at of, the moment? Of course there is chance for peace. I mean, the war could end right now if Russia stopped this aggression. Yeah. Um, and uh, for anyone who thinks that they are neutral in this war, if you have recognized Ukraine within internationally recognized borders, then you are not neutral because mm -hmm. this war is being led in Ukraine, on Ukrainian territory, on Ukrainian soil. So this is uh, the way to end the war. Well, um, also wars end either with military victory, mm -hmm. which does not seem to be within reach at this point. They would really have to get a lot more military support in terms of quantities and qualities of weapons. Uh, or they end at a negotiating table, but um, the terms of uh, a possible peace settlement are up to Ukraine yes. uh, to determine, because as I said, we have to support their right to self-defense. And looking forward beyond the conflict, do you think that NATO states are doing enough to prepare for the reconstruction efforts that are obviously going to be necessary in Ukraine following the war? Oh, this is going to be a huge effort. And as someone, again, who has had this experience of working towards peace um, and the reintegration of previously occupied areas of Croatia and reconciliation, which is perhaps one of the most difficult and painful mm -hmm. issues, then all of the material aspects of rebuilding, demining, humanitarian demining, uh, it's going to take years and decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to start working on reconstruction right now, uh, putting in place not just uh, the funding, but the processes, uh, the infrastructure, uh, the agencies, uh, and work very closely with Ukrainians uh, on the lessons learned that we um, have, for those of us who, who have that experience, or, and, and those who were helping us, uh, and other uh, countries who were victims of, of conflict, uh, but there's also so much that we can learn from Ukraine mm -hmm. already, not just militarily, but in many different areas. Um, I travel to the country regularly, and I try to support in many areas, uh, from war crimes issues to humanitarian demining uh, to taking care of veterans, but also women empowerment mm -hmm. and the role of women in peace, security. Uh, and uh, stability and the reconstruction and rebuilding of Ukraine, which will be crucial. Um, but also, I visit hospitals and I see incredible innovation that Ukrainians um, have produced and the, the, um, the human effort, the zeal, the motivation, but also the results that they show. And not just uh, using Western technology mm -hmm. and their own defenses, but really in caring uh, for people, for people's lives and uh, people's health. 
Absolutely, really encouraging to hear. Looking at NATO specifically, it's not that long ago that President Macron made remarks about the state of NATO and the place it held. And it seems that since then, especially since the war in Ukraine, NATO's become quite reinvigorated. I'd be interested in your thoughts on how you think it's changed since you left office in 2020, and also if you think this reinvigoration is thing, a thing that will stick around post -war. And you have to remember that I was also NATO Assistant Secretary General for Public Diplomacy. Yeah at the time when, unfortunately, we were taking peace for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when a lot of people were asking the question about um, the reason for NATO still being there, calling it instrument of the Cold War. Mm. Well, now, unfortunately, the reality has reminded us of the fact that we can never take peace for, for granted. Yeah. Uh, that peace is not something that we have because there's absence of threat. But because there are men and women everywhere working towards uh, bringing about or keeping peace or actively working uh, towards uh, establishing or reestablishing uh, peace. Of course, we cannot be focused only on the transatlantic community and the European continent. We have to hold the same standards uh, towards uh, the rest of the world as well. Uh, and uh, it was this morning, I can't remember who it was exactly, but uh, one of the speakers in the public forum mentioned that the nature of threats is going to be a lot more global and interconnected. Mm -hmm. And even though NATO is uh, basically a regional alliance, uh, nevertheless, uh, cooperation will have to be global uh, in finding paths to peace, security and stability, maintaining dialogue, de-escalating any potential conflict situations because geopolitical problems have a tendency to metastasize very quickly in uh, really making sure that we have exhausted uh, all options possible but before uh, um, before there is an, an, an outbreak. And, and again, um, judging from uh, speaking from, from my own experience, we can never take our eyes off from any area. And I keep warning also about my own neighborhood of the Western Balkans, mm -hmm. where we have seen Russia's hybrid action for years and years. And there is a real and potential threat of a security incident that could potentially uh, get a greater dimension. Mm -hmm. So just keeping vigilant, uh, being aware um, that there is need to invest into that security mm -hmm. in every way possible, including with uh, our financial resources. I never call it defense spending. Mm -hmm. I always call it defense investment. It's investment into our own future, which is very much defined by security. And after all, it's also investing into our own uh, industries and production base. And the fact that many of the military technologies ultimately find their use in the civilian sector as well. You've obviously touched on regional spending and regional power. It's clear that NATO isn't the only body that has seen expansion through the war. And there's a real emphasis being put on independent and muscular EU military policy. I'm curious what you think about, as the EU develops its own more fleshed out military policy, how the EU and NATO can work together to ensure there's synergy between those two things. First of all, I want to say that um, there is a great all overlapping of the number of countries who are uh, member states of NATO and of the EU. Yes. And obviously, uh, most of the contributions uh, to NATO and to both are national, mm -hmm. national contributions. So I think we, we are in a, a need of greater synergy mm -hmm. uh, and putting in effort into designing uh, common strategies and plans to avoid duplication, but also to complement each other. Now, uh, for years and years, we've also been arguing for more defense investment here on the European side of the transatlantic community mm -hmm. as well. And um, um, throughout my entire political and diplomatic career, I supported, uh, first of all, um, the um, investment into defense, defense investment, especially after um, the uh, Wales uh, summit pledge mm -hmm. on the 2% of the GDP uh, for um, defense uh, investment. Um, and also on strengthening the European side of the Atlantic. For a long time, um, we heard voices from the other side of the Atlantic that Europeans were free riders, mm -hmm. not investing enough into defense and relying too much on the United States. And we have seen actual conflictual situations develop as well. On the other hand, when I was working at NATO and um, afterwards when I was president, um, there was a lot of fear on the European side of the Atlantic about Pivot Asia, about the U.S. Mm -hmm. shifting focus to China, uh, to um, Asia Pacific. 
um, which is a genuine concern. Although I do believe that this uh, transatlantic alliance, which has been strengthened by these, uh, by the common threat of uh, uh, Russia posing actually a long-term uh, threat to our security, uh, but also NATO's uh, engagement in uh, other parts of the world that reflect upon uh, our own um, uh, security. By that, I mean partnerships and, and talking, not, uh, not uh, I don't mean military intervention in other parts of the world. I think that the time of the out-of-area operations is mostly over. Um, however, um, when we talk about uh, investing here on the European side of the Atlantic, and when we talk about strategic autonomy, I don't see a conflict of interest there, so mm -hmm. to say. Strategic autonomy does not mean that Europe would disengage mm -hmm. from uh, NATO. Uh, on the contrary, everybody in the European Union says that NATO remains essential uh, for the transatlantic community. But strategic autonomy also means being able to react quickly and swiftly, uh, preferably together when we can mm -hmm. with our allies and partners, but also on our own when it's not possible. Thank you, Madam President. Um, really you. lovely hearing from you and been really insightful. Thank, Thank you. you.